with delight, God will turn to you. For now is the time of fulfillment. The reign of our God is at hand. Reform your life, turn from sin and believe this glorious God will turn to you. Come and return to the Lord. All you weary, bring your grieving hearts. With kindness and mercy, God's compassion will fill your hearts with love. Have mercy, O Lord, on your people. In your goodness wipe away our guilt. Wash us clean, free us to become your living song of praise. Turn, turn to the living. Sing with joy to the Lord. Listen with an open heart. Hear God's voice and follow. Our good shepherd is guiding the way. In all our grief and fear, we turn to you. Oh God, you know all that we think or do. You know the pain we put each other to 
put aside the angry word The clenching fist, the wish and will to hurt Teach us the way in which love best is served Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, grant us peace. God, when we suffer, Lost in all our fear Lord, have mercy Christ, have mercy Lord, grant us peace Lord, have mercy Christ, have mercy Lord, grant us peace In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. That which has become our traditional entrance through the season of Lent certainly takes on poignancy in these days. Ours, whether we look at our own need to repent and turn from sin, or we look to the world and its brokenness, Ours could not simply be the anger and criticism of those doing such injustice to peace. It cannot even be the frustration about our own sin and weakness. All must be then brought to God in hope, the only one who can transform darkness with glimmers of light. Certainly, last evening, pictures of people from Poland Students keeping themselves from their class schedules. Priests, religious seminarians, men and women of all ages providing food and shelter, outreach, warm embraces, coaxing a smile for the first time on faces of refugees that have known only great sadness. The poignant example of those who are not just speaking in outrage, but reaching out in compassion must not be lost on us. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their efforts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priests shall receive the basket from you, and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God. My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country. He gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord, your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It's written, one does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. And the devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it's been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. And Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. And then he led him to Jerusalem. He made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it's written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. The Word of God is in your heart. You have only to carry it out. Brothers and sisters, that's one of the major works of Lent. To replace all those words that are in our minds and our hearts whether they be of the world, or of the disgruntled, or of ourselves, and to allow the Word of God to echo, to echo within our hearts. For we see today, in the temptations of Jesus, that Jesus stands on the Word in response to each temptation. He doesn't enter into discussion or compromise, but he stands on the word. Does that reflect our position? 
Or do we compromise with a watered-down version? But after all, the word of God has to fit the times. When we or a politician or anyone in power says, well, I personally believe this, but I can't impose, then we're not standing on the word of God. When we profess to believe that word of God among others who will probably look up to us because of it, and yet in other circles we're silent or even contradict it, we are not standing on the word of God. When our children are influenced by the words of the world but are not faithfully brought to be nourished at the the Eucharistic table in the word of God, we're not standing on the word of God. In each case, in these three temptations, the temptation, number one, for immediate gratification. Don't wait, you're hungry, just go for what you want. Pleasure. The second, the temptation, to have power regardless of the price tag. As the devil points out, I will give you all this if you worship me. Well, first it wasn't his to give. Just like those in our world today who think they can take, it's not theirs to take. Jesus doesn't have a discussion or a compromise. He stands on the word, you shall worship the Lord your God. Him alone shall you adore. And then finally, put God to the test. Your God, let me see. What the devil does to Jesus in the desert, people do throughout his public ministry. If you want us to believe in you, what work are you going to do here? We heard you did this here, this here. No miracles happen to get people to believe. It's when people believe that miracles happen. And Jesus says what we sang in the psalm. No. His response is, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test because the devil misquotes. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you. With their hands they'll support you lest you dash your foot against a stone. That's right. Jesus stood on that word. He didn't need to discuss it. He didn't need to prove anything to the evil one. Sometimes we don't like to hear the truth of what is for our good, for our healing, for our strength. It's like the story of the man who went to his doctor. He was overweight, he had high cholesterol, he had high blood pressure, he had clogged arteries, he had numerous heart conditions. And so the doctor said to him, listen, if you wanna have a quality of life, if you don't just wanna exist, then you need to start eating fish and vegetables. And to help the man to keep it in mind, he said, so just go by this in life. If it doesn't swim, don't eat it. (laughs) Later that day, the man was seen by a neighbor in his backyard in the swimming pool with a pig. And the neighbor said, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to teach this pig to swim. It's a funny story, but it so often reflects the compromise, the sacrifice that we avoid. From today's gospel, we have three profound lessons. As I said, Jesus stands on the word in response to temptation. He doesn't get into discussion or compromise. Secondly, these temptations were the consequence of Jesus' decision to carry out the mission entrusted to him. When he said yes to the Father's will, he therefore opens himself up to be tempted. And brothers and sisters, that's what happens to us when we set ourselves to do the Father's will. The devil will try to stop us. That's a reality. What we enter into is called spiritual warfare, and it needs to be taken seriously. Look at your list of the Wednesday night series we're gonna be doing. Look at the last one. It's on spiritual warfare because we're being challenged to live our faith like never before, with, from a depth and with a commitment of real disciples. And if we individually and as a parish 
respond to that call that we need to know about spiritual warfare. The temptations were the consequence of Jesus' decision to carry out the mission entrusted to him. But then finally, the consoling message for us. As we turn to his word, as we get closer to him in prayer, as we push aside through fasting those things that get in the way, we seek to create more space so that we can be more closely united to Jesus and we can be victorious over our temptations. When we're at worship, we're present to worship. We're not looking at our cell phones or wondering about what we're going to do tomorrow. We are present to God. And in all aspects of our life, we have to be present to God. United to Jesus, we can be victorious as he was victorious over temptation. It happens through his mercy. It happens through his coming to us in the Eucharist. And it happens through our unity with one another as part of the church that underscores for us and opens for us that word of God. And so, we're called to stand on the word as our response. Wednesday night, we're talking about the universal call of evangelization. We're called to realize that if we're going to serve Christ, we're going to face temptations. One of those Wednesday nights, we're talking about spiritual warfare. But united to Jesus, we can be victorious over the tempter. Through his mercy, one of the nights is on how we open ourselves to that. Through his coming to us in the Eucharist, another evening's topic. And through being part of his church, yes, that too is part of the Wednesday night focus. I invite you, I urge you to take seriously the call and to follow the example of Jesus. St. Augustine put it well to help us understand why Jesus, who is God, but in his humanity will allow himself to go through these temptations. He sums it up. If in Christ we've been tempted, then in Christ we have overcome the devil. Do you think only of Christ's temptations and fail to think of his victory? See yourself as tempted in him and see yourself as victorious in him. He could have kept the devil from himself, but if he were not tempted, he could not teach you how to triumph over temptation. May we learn the lesson well this Lent. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us in trusting faith bring our knees to the merciful God. 
that led by the Spirit, we may gain greater insights into our journey of faith as we live these days of Lent and more consciously avoid temptations and occasions of sin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our catechumens and candidates will experience a deepening of the Lord's action in their lives as they embrace these days of purification and enlightenment and are called to the Easter sacraments of initiation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will know healing, the doubtful come to deeper faith, and those who live in guilt or denial will experience God's mercy and forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all in military service and those who place themselves at risk for the protection of others might be safe, and their loved ones comforted in their concern for them and for the people of Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the dead, especially Nancy Laughlin, for whom this holy mass is offered, will know eternal rest in the mercy of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have asked for our prayers will take comfort in the nearness of God in all needs and crosses of daily life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our refuge and strength, source of every good gift, heed the holy prayers of your church. Grant we obtain what we ask for in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Could you please join in singing number 121, led by the Spirit, number 121. Right and just. 
just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. So that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, an instrument of your peace among all people, 
May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. And just as you've gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus the Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God, renew your people. 
We who long to see your face Strengthen hearts that have grown feeble Fill our lives with truth and grace Only you can win our freedom Only you can bring us peace Only in the cross of Jesus Will the captives find relief The darkness that surrounds us, we have lost you from our sight. Even though your love has found us, we embrace the powers of night. Scatter now our deepest darkness, guide our hearts into the light. Join us to the cross of Jesus, help us set our living right. us forth to walk in justice, rescue us from sin and break. Through the power of your Spirit, breathe in us the breath that saves. Strengthen us in our communion, one in word and cup and bread. Here within the cross of Jesus, God, renew your people, we who long to see your face. Strengthen hearts that have grown feeble, fill our lives with truth and grace. Only you can win our freedom, only you can bring us peace. Only in the cross of Jesus, Will the captives find release?
could you please join in singing number 509, O Lord, I Am Not Worthy, number 509. Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word that proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. First, I would like to thank you, so many of you who came in our day of prayer for Ukraine last Wednesday, the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, remember that continues every Wednesday. It was very much encouraging to see so many of you. Obviously, the words and music of the prayers of this liturgy not only remind us of our need to be fervent in prayer, but our need to counter evil with goodness and to increase the light in the darkness of the world and to begin in our own place. One could not have paid attention last night praying the Stations of the Cross and not been almost overwhelmed by the many links with what we face in our world today. And so daily Mass, the Stations of the Cross, other Lenten devotions, everything that is outlined very clearly in the bulletin, I urge you not just to listen to me announce it on Sunday, but to come, to take part, more than ever, not only for our world, but for ourselves. As I mentioned in the homily, our Wednesday night series touches on all of those things from the gospel. On Tuesday mornings, you have a chance to gather after morning mass and look a little deeper at the Sunday readings to take off where the homily left off. Details about the Tuesday mornings delving into scripture opportunities that begin this week are all in the bulletin. There's also previews of coming attractions. There's a men's morning of reflection coming up on St. Joseph's Day. There's a very special choral event in which some very uh, impressive singers, both from New Hampshire and from Boston, will be coming to present a very beautiful and moving choral presentation of Evensong in the English cathedral tradition. A beautiful evening on Leitari Sunday for us to come before the Lord and to be lifted up with magnificent music uh, by these people who uh, have performed this in various areas and offered to come to us uh, drawn by the beauty of our church and by its acoustic and wish to give that gift to you. I joyfully accepted um, their offer. So please note all of those things and save those dates. That's all in the parish bulletin. 
Now, as we leave the church today, I would like to um, invite you, uh, in addition to our prayers and our action, to offer financial support to support many who are seeking to help the people of the Ukraine. There are free will offering baskets between the doors, also here near the front door. We will be sending these to Catholic Relief Services, which is a highly reputable organization that has on-site centers to bring aid directly to people. And so today I thank you for whatever you choose to drop in the baskets. If you're not prepared today, uh, simply next Sunday drop an envelope in that simply says Ukraine. If you make a check out, it should be made out to Corpus Christi Parish. We will be sending one check to Catholic Relief Services. So thank you in advance for giving it your consideration. And then lastly, next week in the bulletin, I will be outlining uh, plans for our future, uh, and particularly when I speak of in the gospel, the thrust of evangelization. So before I do that, I'd like to make you aware of some changes that will be happening here. Uh, about a year ago, our faith formation director, Brenda, and I had a conversation, and she mentioned at that time, looking down the road to transitioning out of her position here and uh, not necessarily retiring, but uh, as she said, uh, switching gears, and uh, also discerning about the fact that her family lives in Ohio, and perhaps that might be a time for a move there. So we keep Brenda in our prayers in these days as she discerns what the future will hold. We also give thanks to God for the blessings of her many years of service here in the parish. She will continue to do her work among us now until the 30th of June. And then as she departs from us, we will have an opportunity before that to personally thank and wish her well. So let's keep Brenda in our prayers uh, as she helps us in the transition. She is more than willing to do that and uh, in helping to be in a smooth transition, but also as she discerns where the Lord leads her from here. For us, I will not be replacing that position as is, but rather using it as an opportunity to launch an approach of evangelization that uh, I have been praying about for the past two years. Uh, I think each point we have to pause and say at this point in our history, what do we need the best to fulfill our mission to embrace a future full of hope? Some parishes are looking at downsizing, others are facing closure, we're looking at expanding and embracing a future full of hope. Much prayer has gone into it. I have some exciting things that will wait until next Sunday uh, for me to share with you. And then we'll be continually explaining it and unwrapping it uh, over the, um, the months ahead. So pray. Pray for Brenda as she transitions. Pray for those who will be joining us and taking on new dimensions of ministry in our community. And let us support one another in this Lenten journey. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you to those of you who do respond, who do come. You're an encouragement to me. For those who still stay on the edge, I pray for you fervently every single day. And ask the Lord to convince you. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Could you please join in singing number 136? Again, we keep this solemn fast, number 136. Thank you.